This morning, I've entitled my sermon, Empowered to Cross Over. And I want to build from what Pastor Daryl shared last week. Uh, last week, he talked about uh, breaking new ground and how when the, uh, God led the children of Israel out of Egypt to the Promised Land, and specifically some of the principles that we heard last week was that they were told to forget the past glory, they were told to focus on the reward, and always to follow the ways of the Lord. So I want to build on that to help us to understand as we continue not just to break new grounds, but to move forward and to cross over to where God wants us to go, what are the things that we need to do to activate faith in our hearts that we can progress to fulfill the calling and the destiny that God has in store for us. You know, back to Joshua 1, chapter 1, verse 2, uh, where we read last week, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. So now get up and cross over now that's the word right go up and cross over the jordan you and all these people to the land that i am giving to the children of israel so the lord commanded joseph joseph and uh, the children of israel to cross over river jordan the crossing over of the jordan river was a significant event because it marked israel's entrance into the promised land meaning that's like wow that's the first stop for us as we enter into the promised land after crossing over they were then to conquer jericho and then the other kingdom so crossing the river jordan was a very significant event for them because like i said it was the it earmarked the entrance into the promise that god has given them you know crossing over is very important Crossing over simply means to move from one side to the other side. That's right. To move one side to the other side. Uh, if we don't cross over, we will never get to the other side. I remember when I was very young. I mean, this is almost uh, 30 over years back. Uh, one time we had our cousin, some of my cousins, come over to stay at my house in Kapong Baru, at my old house. And uh, we decided that we will wake up very early in the morning the next day and go around just venturing or doing some jogging. So I remember that morning, there were about maybe five or six of us plus my sister. And also we woke up with some of my cousins who stayed over at our house and we begin to journey actually uh, out of where I was staying in Kepong Baru the time we were staying in uh, you know Jalan Lang Helang Pute or it was called Jalan 124 all right uh, I call it Kepong Hikes lah, okay at the mountain where our, our old church is right up there right? so we were staying there and we walked all the way down if you remember our old church right you have to go down the uh, slope all right of course we didn't use the slope we used we go through the houses behind where the old church is to cross over now you know right there is actually a railway track there you have to cross over right and so once we reach that railway track we just cross over the railway track to get to the other side then we realized that one of my cousins uh, was stuck on the other side and we asked him hey cross over and he didn't want to you know why because he was afraid to cross over then we told him hey it's okay one now you know just cross over now by the way i'm not encouraging you to simply cross over railway track this like happened 30 years ago right so i'm sure now they got like fencing and stuff like that uh and so we told him hey cross over they said no it's just very dangerous what if a train passed by and hit me you know then we're saying hello no la, no train will pass by now on and then you say look to your left no look to your right okay you can see from such a far distance that the train is not coming and moreover if the train comes you can hear the train one mile I say clearly it's so safe you know then I remember I jumped around a few times crossover crossover just to show but he was very afraid and finally was able to persuade him and then he quickly made the leap over and uh, he was able to cross over all right simple principle simple story but let me tell you something if you don't cross over you will not get to the other side let me say it again if you don't cross over you will not get to the other side you know we are in a situation where it's unprecedented all right with the whole covid 19 situation and the and the cmco right now all right and it has a lot of things have changed and evolved and we are into what we call the new norm all right and because of new norm we need to learn to accept the fact that things are no longer the same and therefore we need to cross over because during the mco things perhaps were so-called in a pause in terms of perhaps your work or your businesses a pause or maybe some of you have taken one step back because of your business and stuff like that but you realize uh, what's happening this past week and right now and even in the days to come uh, as the the whole mco is being lifted 
right, face by face, and uh, we would safely say in a couple of weeks or perhaps months, all right, um, uh, most things will be opened up, all right. And what's happening right now is that we are all starting to re-enter or return to some sort of routine or to return to some sort of the new normal. We are crossing over back to a place that perhaps may not be very familiar. Why? Because you realize that most things have changed. Uh, we have social distancing rules. Some of you return back to your organizations. You find out your organization soon has changed. Uh, I just read a report uh, about the local SMEs. They did a, a research about the local SMEs to discuss, to ask them the question, how they impacted and what changes that they made. They, the research tells us in Malaysia that at least 70% of the SMEs are making structural changes that includes actually retrenching people, all right, or pay cuts, structural changes, or changes in terms of their business plans, in terms of how they want to navigate it through their business because of the impact, all right? So many of us, when you return back to your companies, your companies may not actually look the same anymore because there is a refocus in terms of strategy. Now, even as a church, our own church, Bethany Church, we have a, a major refocus on the way that we are doing ministry right now through online. Uh, I have a, we have a major uh, uh, re, redeployment in terms of even our staff, staff that usually used to do certain things, now we require them to do other things. Why? Because it's no longer the same. So if you don't cross over and we are still in a place where we are like denial or saying, never mind, I want to stay here, you will never be able to be successful, all right? Uh, change is always there. Right? In fact, um, Einstein says that uh, um, insanity is doing the same thing but expecting different results. We cannot be doing the same thing anymore because our environment has changed. Right? So we need to be very flexible and agile. I encourage you, these two keywords, right? flexible and agile, agile to actually adapt to the changes that are happening right before our eyes right now. Because what has happened is that crisis has, is an accelerator. Crisis basically has accelerated everything and anything. For example, uh, technology. Because of crisis, it has accelerated our use of technology. You know, I, as, as your pastor, I've always knew that we need to go into technology, always knew that we need to do online service. I always knew we need to put our sermons or whatever into YouTube. In fact, many of you keep bugging me and say, Pastor, why not you load your sermons into YouTube and record them? And many of you bugging me, but I've always postponed it. I felt we're not ready. I felt not time yet, you know, but guess what? When the whole MCO happened, crisis war is an accelerator immediately we didn't even have a choice within a day we decided that we will go online was it a bad thing no it accelerated a change that was needed anyway and so for many of us we are going to go through some changes i want to encourage you to be very flexible because why if you don't cross over you don't accept this change you will never get to the other side if you don't have a change mindset mind, mindset mindset you will not be able to cross over you can't get over to the other side and if you cannot get over to the other side you will actually lose out because everybody is adapting to the changes and doing new things while you are still backward you know, I'm so proud of many of our church members, especially, I must say, those who are not so young, our older members. I'm so proud of them. You know why? Because when we started MCO, we have Zoom prayer meetings, we have Zoom care cells, you know. Uh, many of them struggle with Zoom, with technology. They struggle. And so to the best of our ability, we help them, we help them. But after a couple of weeks, I am so proud of them because I see so many of our, our older folks who are not familiar with technology, now they are so familiar with Zoom. They know how to uh, show the video, they know how to mute, they know, know how to unmute and speak. Guess what? Congratulations, because you are going with the changes. You are agile, you are flexible enough to cross over because like I said, if you don't have a change mindset, you won't cross over. If you don't cross over, you won't get to the other side. If you don't get to the other side, you will be the biggest loser. Because change is always constant and we must always be at the forefront of change and understand the, the, understand the surrounding that is uh, uh, around us and then 
flow along with the changes when we know that they will be beneficial to us. All right? And so even for us in church, this is a new norm. Our online services, it looks like even with the lifting of the uh, uh, MCO slightly, uh, with, the, with the conditional MCO right now, and then maybe next week, a couple of weeks, you know, uh, you'll be losers, some other industries will open up. But it looks like so far for churches and religious organizations with larger gatherings, we may uh, not be allowed still to meet for some time. So this is the new normal for us to be meeting uh, via technology like this. Our Zoom prayer, our Zoom uh, 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 cell groups, our online services, our online communion, for example. So I encourage you, come on, embrace the new norm. Right? Don't say, uh, for example, uh, yeah, once I come back to church, if I can only, I will give online. No, why not? If you can, you know how to do it, start giving online right now. Now, don't say uh, communion, uh, never mind now, when I come back to church only, I will take communion. Why? You want to wait to come back to church, only take communion? Because you can take communion, holy communion, in your own house. Right? We already teach you how to prepare the bread and cup. So, what I'm saying is, come on, we have to embrace the changes and go with it. Instead of being uh, uh, reactive, we need to be proactive and adopt the new norm. Amen? That causes us to be able to change, causes us to be able always at the forefront to know what God is doing and to actually ride along with it. So I want to share this morning some principles of how we cross over from the book of Joshua chapter 3. So in Joshua chapter 3 verse 5, as the Lord was commanding uh, Joshua and the children of Israel to conquer uh, um, the land, Jericho, uh, but they first had to cross over River Jordan. So in Joshua 3 verse 5, it says this, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things for you. So the Lord commanded Joshua and the command was, consecrate yourself. But it was with a promise. It says, consecrate yourself, but tomorrow, what will happen? Amazing things will happen. Wow, what a promise. If we were to consecrate ourselves, the Lord says, amazing things will happen. So what is consecration? Consecration is simply this, right? It is basically the act of setting apart, dedicating something or someone, in that case us, dedicating ourselves to say, God, I set apart myself for your use, to worship you, all right? It's about the separation of oneself from the things that are unclean, all right? Especially anything that will contaminate our relationship with God. So we say, God, I don't want to do with that which contaminate my walk with you. I will set myself apart. So it carries the connotation of sanctification, of even repentance, so that we can live a holy life and a life that is pure. Now, in the scripture, sanctification always have the connotation of you're always set apart from something unto something. It's not just set apart for, for, for no purpose. It's always from something unto something. So, for example, we are set apart from sin unto holiness. Set apart from darkness to light. Set apart from just learning to care for ourselves, being selfish to God dedicating or surrender, uh, surrendering our lives to God so that He can use our life. S uh, consecration simply means to present, to give ourselves to the Lord afresh. Oh God, I surrender, I dedicate, I consecrate, I give to you my life afresh. That's what consecration is, is to be fully devoted to an intimate and exclusive relationship with God. It is a commitment to be exclusively His. It is about dethroning myself and enthroning Christ in my life. That's what consecration is. You know, one thing, if, if there's if one thing that I learned from this entire COVID-19 MCO situation is to really consecrate myself. Because with this whole COVID-19 situation, I found myself learning to be more dependent on God. When I see how easy it is for people just to die from a virus infection, when I see how easy for it for businesses just to crumble overnight, when I see how easy for people just to lose their jobs, their livelihoods, uh, get into financial challenges, when I look at all this stuff that is happening around me, when I begin to reflect, I, the only conclusion I can come up with in this situation for me personally is, oh, I need God more. 
I am so dependent on God and therefore I'm going to dethrone myself and make sure I enthrone Christ. I'm going to make a commitment to be exclusively exclusively His because I'm 100% dependent upon God. This whole COVID-19 situation has brought me and I want to challenge you as well, I'm sure you as well, to come to a place where we say, God, I really need you. And so the first thing for us to be able to successfully cross over is to live a consecrated life. As we're entering back into our business, entering back into our jobs, going back to our so-called normal routines, all right? We don't want to forget that we need to continue to be consecrated unto the Lord. Perhaps some of us have grown, go, uh, grown cold in our walk with God. We have um, a backslidden. Uh, we have lost our first love for Jesus. Our hearts have grown hard. Perhaps there are sins in our life that we need to repent from or we have too much concern for worldly things or materialistic things that has actually uh, hindered our walk with God. We need a renewed relationship with Jesus. And the best time to do that is right now as we are preparing ourselves to re-enter, to cross over back into the routines of life. We need to go in different. Right? That's my point. We need to go in different. We cannot, after learning from this whole COVID-19 situation, for the last almost two months, we are under MCO, and then now we're going back to work. We say, hey, same, I never changed. It's just the same me. It cannot be the same me. God would have spoken to us these past eight weeks. God would have challenged us to walk closer to Him. God would have, you know, uh, 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 surfaced out some things that are wrong in our lives that we need to forsake. God would have changed our hearts, our mind, caused us to, to see what really matters. So as we enter back, crossing over back into the routines of life, we come in different. We have to come in different. We have a different perspective, with a different mindset, with a different walk with God. It's the new me crossing over back to the routines of life. The second thing I want to share this morning for us to be able to successfully cross over is this, is to have a courageous spirit. So the first one is to have a consecrated heart. The second one is to have a courageous spirit. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 15, it says, Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. And so it was very interesting that as the Lord was leading Joshua and the children of Israel to actually cross over Jordan River, we read in John chapter 3, uh, sorry, Joshua chapter 3 verse 15 that the Jordan River was at what? Flood stage during the harvest, meaning it was flooded, all right, during this particular season. Or the New uh, Living Translation says that the water was overflowing its banks, all right? So some of you who are more familiar with rivers, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because different seasons, the rivers rise higher. For example, our folks that go to Kampung Bakok, uh, some of them uh, our orang asli kampung. Uh, in Kampung Bakok particular, there's a very nice river there. So some of them come back and they say, whoa, we had such a nice time, you know? We were standing at the bridge, then we jump, plunge into the water and bathe with the children and play with them, all right? And then uh, other ones come back and say, huh, what river? Cannot jump also? Water so shallow, jump already, you can injure ourselves, right? Why? Because in different times of the year, uh, uh, the depth of the river is different. And so the scripture tells us at this particular time, of all times, when they are told to cross the Jordan River to the other side so that they can enter into the promised land, they were asked to cross during the time where it is flooded, where the waters are high at flood stage. Why? <laughs> Because if you remember what I preached a couple of weeks ago, somehow God's way of working and asking us to work is always not the simple way. God always puts challenging tasks ahead of us. If there's anything that requires some sort of significant impact that God wants us to be involved in, it is usually bigger than what we think we are capable of. Right? Remember, two weeks ago I shared when they were told in Deuteronomy to conquer the land, the enemies. We were told that enemies were bigger and stronger than them. When the spies went out to spy out the land, they saw the enemies. They said the guys physically were even stronger and bigger than us. And right now, as they face this river, they asked to cross this river. It is not just any kind of river. The river was, the river was overflowing to its bank. So you can imagine the water is strong, the current is strong, that kind of environment. Then they are told to cross. 
God somehow asks them to cross when it is not easy to cross. You know, one of the uh, um, uh, channels, YouTube channels that I follow, all right, and I, I watch some of it, and this one I particularly like, all right, is by this, call, call, this guy called Mark Vains, all right? He's a food blogger, so he travels around the world and eats different kind of food, and then he, he blogs about it, or he basically uh, uh, produces vlogs or video logs about it, and so I see it on, on YouTube, all right? My, my son also loves it, and you know, my wife also loves it, my, my daughter also loves it, so we see it quite often, we see how he, he eats certain foods. Now, he's an American guy who has basically settled down in Thailand marry a Thai lady and then they have a kid and so he's traveling around the world but you know he's American but one thing I, I that, that uh, very uh, special about Mark Wins is he's American who loves to eat spicy food all right in fact his motto is this uh, he'll wear this t-shirt his motto is this his, the, the, the motto says um, if it's not spicy I'm not eating okay <laughs> he loves spicy stuff and then when you see him eating stuff he will put spoonfuls of chili inside all right and he's a chili party king all right that's why i, I then identify him because i love to eat chili party if he eats a plate of rice or noodles he will you know i would take maybe like you know two three slices of chili party and eat that he will he will scoop two or three spoonfuls into his plate and then he will eat that chili party that's how crazy he is okay for him is if it's not spicy i'm not eating <laughs> And somehow, in, 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 in how God functions, I realize that, you know, if it's not difficult, God won't ask us to do. Whenever He leads us to a path that is really significant, that is really meaningful, that is created to bring Him glory, it's always something big that is beyond us. Why? Number one, so that we can learn to be dependent on Him for strength. And number two, so that the outcome can be supernatural. And number three, so that when all the dust settles down, when we see the supernatural, we can only say, wow, this is 100% God. So whatever situation you're going through right now, the challenges that you have, come on, just hang in there, all right? It, it's big, hang in there. Know that God wants to use it for His glory. And our job is to activate our faith to believe that although it's big, but I can do it. You know, even for a church, uh, with this whole launching of Bethany COVID-19 uh, Care Fund. Do you know that it's also stretching us beyond our comfort zone? It stretched me as your pastor. It stretches our leaders because we, we were talking about the amount of money that we want to sow in as a board. And our board had to deliberate on it because you know, right, we are right in the middle of raising funds for our own building. And so we're thinking at the same time, we have a need, we don't have a building, and we're still a long way off in terms of raising funds for our own building. At the same time, are we sure that we want to uh, uh, um, you know, give this significant amount of money into COVID-19 uh, care fund? And we came to the conclusion, yes, yes, because this is what we feel God is leading us to. Because this is, this is, we, we feel that God has blessed us so that in this time, we don't want to be like, okay, take care of ourselves. We got still building, all right? Don't, 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 don't. No, we're not thinking like that. We're thinking how we can be a blessing. So it stretches our faith. Very often, when God wants us to do something significant for Him, it is beyond what we think we are capable of, or it stretches our comfort zone. And so when the children of Israel were asked to cross the river, again, it was flood time. It was flood time. Now, we can go back to Joshua chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. It says this, Now the Jordan is at flood stage. All right, we read about that, huh? flooding. Now Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap at a great distance away. Wow, amazing, huh? So the scripture tells us, as the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, they reached the, the river, and it says that as their feet touched the water's edge, then what happened? The water from upstream coming down stopped, all right, and it piled up like a heap from a great distance. Another version says the water piled up like a wall, all right? So the water was stopped. And then it was dry, dry land, and the children of Israel uh, crossed over. Now, it's very interesting because as we read the scriptures, it tells us that, you know, the priests actually first put their feet right at the water's edge. 
So it wasn't a situation where it says, okay, God call us to cross the river. Huh? Okay, I'm sure that he's going to cross the river to stop flowing. And so they're waiting there, waiting there. Okay, God, stop the river, stop the river. Still flowing, still flowing. How to cross, cannot cross. It wasn't that situation, right? The river did not stop flowing before they entered in. But the scripture tells us as the priest went to the river, as their feet touched the water's edge, meaning the moment their feet touched the water's edge, then the water from the river stopped to flow and it came up like a wall of water. So what does it say? To cross over, you and I have to take the first small step. God didn't stop the river and say, you cross. No, God required them to take that one first small step. And once the step was taken, they, they, their feet touched the edge of the rivers, the scripture tells, immediately the miracle happened. Faith without works is dead. We need to do our part to activate faith in our hearts and to become courageous as we cross over and go back into our workplaces, our family and our schools soon to come. We need to activate faith to know that God has given us strength so that we can advance. We are not left by ourselves. Faith without works is dead. So we need to activate faith. And for the children of Israel, the priests had to take the first step. Remember, we do the asking, God does the answering. We do the believing, God does the miraculous. We do the natural, let God do the supernatural. And let me say this, we take the first small step. God takes the next few giant steps. You know, as I begin to read scripture and also um, from my own personal experience and how I see God leading me and the church, you know, I figure out this is like how God works. Firstly, He wants to do something significant. It will be something big that is beyond us. And then He will require us to always take the first small step. All right? And I, I keep saying small because the scripture that we read says the feet of the priest touch the water's edge only touch the water's edge, that means it's a small step, but didn't like go into the water. The minute their feet touch the water's edge, small step, the miracle happened. And, and the way I see it, God always wants us to activate our faith. He always acts after He sees faith, small faith. He activates. Remember the scripture tells us, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, small mustard seed, then you can say to the mountain, be removed from here and be thrown there and the mountain will be thrown. Why? Because you have a mustard seed and nothing will be impossible for you. So God responds to faith. That's it. God responds to faith. And like I said, we take that one small step and God take the next few giant steps. And then God requires us then to take the next small step. And then we see him take the next few giant steps. That's how I see God working uh, uh, in Scripture and many times in our, in our lives. God always requires a response. God never wants us to like, okay, God work, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Okay, okay, come on, God work, work, I'm waiting. No, God requires faith to be activated through that one small step. Faith is step by step, step by step. So, for example, this was the, the first step that they, the children of Israel took just to cross the river Jordan. Did they reach the promised land yet? No, not yet, because two chapters after that is about conquering Jericho, <laughs> chapter 4 and 5. They then conquered Jericho, remember, wall cities? And after Jericho wasn't finished, they had to conquer Ai. After Ai, then was the southern cities, then the northern kings, all right? So they kept going from one battle to another battle, one step at a time, one time of expression faith, then the next expression of faith again, step by step. So I'm going to encourage you and ask you, what is the step of faith that you're going to take as you prepare yourself to cross over and to re-enter? What is the step of faith you're taking? All right? Be open to change. All right? For some of you, it could be as simple as coming out of your home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, some of you are still stuck in your home, although the government says you can actually go out to do some exercise, you can go out actually to buy stuff. Uh, you're still stuck in your home and you're still in some situation where you're fearful. Can I encourage you? Come on. You know, I'm not asking you not to take precaution, right? Uh, but you cannot live in fear. For some of you, it's simply just getting out of your home. Go and take a walk around the park that's nearby or on your street. Exercise a little bit. Go and buy some grocery items because it is opening up right now. We are permitted to do so. For some of you, the first step of 
first step of step of faith is perhaps that you need to learn a new skill. All right, learn uh, uh, for example how to zoom. All right, how to use social media. For some of you, is perhaps. Uh, because you are crossing over, you need to explore a new kind of work or career. Because your current work or career is not working out, and because of MCO has made things much worse, you may have even lost your jobs, or you know that it's not going to work out, you can foresee it, and maybe your first step is to find out, perhaps I need to move on to another kind of work. And for some of you, that step of faith you're taking is just very common sense, wise things that you need to practice sound financial management, right? So perhaps I need to manage my finances a bit tighter and wiser in this environment. And some of you is just, you know, just do it. Whatever that you were planning to do, right? Uh, just do it instead of just waiting. You know, I. I uh, connected with somebody that I, I knew was planning for their wedding. Uh, this is a friend of mine and they were planning for actually uh, uh, um, about, I think it was May or June, not mistaken. And so because of this whole situation, they postponed the wedding and then they kept postponing, postponing, postponing uh, because the, the MCO kept, kept extending. And so this person said, okay, no more postponing. We're just going to get married, <laughs> right? Now, I'm not asking you to do that, right? I'm just giving an example of how they were thinking. They were saying that we, we don't want to be at the mercy of this COVID-19, you know, and then they were thinking, Marriage is just between the both of them. So they decided, all right, it's okay. We, we can't have the, the wedding that we envisioned, the dinner and that, you know, people coming to church and stuff like that. We can't do all those things, you know, but, you know, it's just between us and they decided that they will get married in a very, in a smaller uh, as a way, all right? Because that, that's for them. I'm not saying that you must do it, right? I'm just saying that for them, that's the right thing to do. That's the step of faith that they are taking. So activate courageous faith to be able to attain the promises of God in this season, right? So the first one is a, for us to cross over a consecrated heart. Number two is about uh, having a courageous spirit. And number three is what I call being calling-centric, all right? Being calling-centric. So what is being calling-centric? Understanding the call of God. Being calling centric is that, look, my eyes are still very firm. In the midst of all that is happening, my job could be changed. I may have a certain adjustment here, an adjustment there. A school is different. My children's arrangement are different. But in the midst of everything, I can look back and say, mm, but God's call for my life, it's still the same. The way that I get there may be different, but God's call for my life is different. That's what I mean by being calling centric. Now in Joshua chapter 3 verse 17, let's go back. It says, the priest who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground. Okay, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. So it says, look, so as the priest was standing there, the river dried up and the scripture tells the entire nation, whole nation had completed the crossing. Wow. Bible scholars tell us there were an estimate of between 2 to 3 million Israelites that made the crossing across River Jordan, an entire nation. Now the key word was this, the whole nation had completed the crossing. No one left behind. The whole nation crossed over. Why? Because God's plan, God's calling was for the entire nation. God had a purpose. It's not like, okay, okay, those of you who want to cross over, you can stay the other side, okay? The rest, the rest of us uh, cross over. No, it wasn't that it was. Come on. God's purpose had to be fulfilled for the entire nation. That's why in verse 17, it says the whole nation had completed the crossing. None was left behind because God had a plan for the children of Israel, for the nation of Israel. God had a plan, the fulfillment of the plan for Israel, that they would be a powerful nation. Remember, we go back to the very promise that God gave to Abraham. Abraham is what we call the first great uh, uh, patriarch all right, of the Israelites. Father Abraham, we call him, right? That was the promise God gave Abraham years before what we are witnessing right now. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, this, was the, this is the promise God gave Abraham. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make you your name great and you will be a blessing. Wow, God promised Abraham, I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And so when Joshua was crossing over, 
the scripture tells all of them completed the crossing. Why? Because it was to fulfill uh, this command that was given to Abraham. They had to be a great nation. They had, then their, their name had to be great. God wanted them so that they will be a blessing. The end goal was for God's purpose to be fulfilled in the life of Israel, the nation of Israel. Right? So as we begin to cross over, right, we must understand it is so that God's will, God's purpose can continue to be fulfilled in our lives. Our lives go on. God's purpose for you and I continues. Some of the things may change because of the situation that is around us, but the calling is the same. No lockdown can ever lock down the call of God in our lives. Let me say it again. Eh? No lockdown can ever lock down the call of God in your life. No lockdown can ever do that. The call of God continues. The call of God is still there. When we begin to read scripture, you will see so many uh, testimonies or so many of the characters in the Bible that went through similar challenging and difficult situations, yet the call of God persisted, yet the call of God, the destiny of God came to pass. For example, Noah was locked down for more than a year in the ark and he emerged to become the father of the nations of the world. We know the story of Joseph, how he was locked down literally in the prison, all right? estimated almost 10 over years from age 17 to 30. And then he emerged as the prime minister of Egypt, someone with a position of influence. Moses was being hidden by God in the remote desert for almost 40 years. Then he emerged as the mighty deliverer of Israel. David was sheltered for about 15 years. The day that he was anointed as king to the day that he actually became king was about 15 years. God, God uh, hid him for that 15 years. Then he emerged as the man that was after God's heart and was ready to be the king. Jonah was locked down, remember? In the fish belly for three days and he emerged as the great evangelist that brought revival to Nineveh. The New Testament church uh, in the book of Acts came under tremendous oppression and persecution that was supposed to finish off the church. Yet a great revival broke out as a result of that persecution. And the resulting effect was tens of thousands of people came to know Jesus. Paul was locked down in a Roman prison. And it was in that Roman prison that Paul wrote what we call the prison, the, uh, prison epistles, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. And finally, our very Lord Jesus Christ, he died and he was locked down for three days in the tomb. Three days later, he resurrected from the dead, conquered sin and death. A lockdown cannot lock down the call and the purposes of God in our lives. No lockdown is bigger than the call of God that is placed in your life. We have a destiny to fulfill. We have people to reach. We have lives to touch. We have giftings that we need to use. And no lockdown can ever prevent that from being fulfilled in our lives. So I encourage you as we prepare to cross over know that we are being empowered by God to do so. As we are prepared to restart, to re-enter back into work and school and whatnot, things are not the same. We come with a change mindset. We enter with a consecrated heart to say that I'm all out for God, living my life exclusively for Him. We enter in and we cross over with a courageous spirit that I know that I need to walk in faith no matter how big the challenge is because the bigger the challenge means the greater the purpose God has for me. I'm going to just take that one step and see how God will then move in giant steps ahead of me. And then I need to be calling-centric to know that I need to stay true and not be persuaded by anything that will cause God's purpose not to be fulfilled. I need to be focused on what God wants uh, in my life to happen. You must cross over. I must cross over. We cannot remain the same because things are no longer the same. 
So cross over in faith, cross over with the promise of God. You know, there are 24 hours in a day. Once the 24th hour finishes, the next day happens, you have the cross hour because it's called the next day. There are seven days in a week. At the end of the seven days, that's it. A new week begins. It's Monday. You have to cross over. You got no choice. We got four to five weeks that make up the month. At the last day of the month, maybe it's 31st March, all right? You, you have to know that that's it. That's the end of the month because tomorrow is a new month. You have to cross over to the new month. There are 12 months in a year. On 31st December, you cannot say, I don't want the year to end. When the clock strikes 12, you have to cross over because it's the new year. You and I, we have to be perceptive and be prophetic in seeing the times and seasons. It is time to cross over. Don't no longer pause, no longer stay there. Cross over with a changed mindset, with a consecrated heart, with a courageous spirit, and understand that I need to be calling-centric so that God's will is done in my life. So no matter what is happening around us right now, all right, as the MCO begins to lift more and more in the coming days and weeks, come on church, be brave, be brave to re-enter, to restart, to cross over. Right? Take all precautionary matters, matters uh, that you uh, met, uh, uh, all precautionary uh, uh, matters that are needed so that you can be physically protected, but in your spirit, in your mind, in your emotions, you must cross over because on the other side is the blessing of God. On the other side is the call of God. On the other side are the provisions of God for you in this new season in your life. No fear, no worry. We don't have to be in a place of anxiety and panic, but we can trust God knowing that I can enter into this new season with faith, crossing over and being empowered by Him. Right? So where you are right now, would you reach out your hands? I'm going to pray for God to empower us to change, for God to empower us to powerfully and with His strength cross over successfully into this new season of our lives. Where you are right now, God is speaking to you. All right? Don't under underestimate what God can do. Some of you are still fe feeling fearful. You have so much worry and burdens that you carry. We're going to pray right now and trust the Holy Spirit to touch you, to liberate you, to give you wisdom and clarity to be able to make right decisions. All right? Just lift up your hands where you are, in your room, while you're watching the TV right now, on your computer screen. Just lift up your hands where you are. I'm going to pray for the Holy Spirit to touch you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for each and every one that is tuning in right now and watching. Lord, I know that you love every single person. I pray, oh God, that you will touch every single person here with your powerful presence, oh God. That each of us, oh God, will be strong, oh God. That we have a mindset that will be able to embrace the changes that is here, oh God. That we will be agile and flexible enough to know that your plans and your purpose are the same. But we need to be agile and flexible enough to make changes, O oh God. And Father, we pray, Lord, for you to help us as we consecrate ourselves. So all of you here, lift up your hands, consecrate yourself. Lord, we want to consecrate ourselves and we pray, O oh God, right now we dedicate ourselves to you. We say, O oh God, that we will set ourselves apart from sin, from darkness, and exclusively live for you, O oh God. We will dethrone ourselves and enthrone Christ in our lives, O oh God. And Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will so empower us, O oh God, that there will be a courageous spirit that will rise from each and every one of us, O oh God, that we will learn to just take one step at a time and take that step of faith. Because once we know, as we take that one small step of faith, you will take multiple giant steps, O oh God, for us. So Father, we pray, let your will be done in our lives. We thank you, O oh God. We bless your holy name, O oh God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we end, we'd like to give an opportunity for those of you here who perhaps you have heard today's message and you realize there is this God that will empower you to cross over and you're saying that I want to experience this God in my heart. 
I want this God to help me so that I can be empowered and be able to be successful. If that's you, you know, I'm going to give you an opportunity to invite Jesus to come into your life. The Bible tells us that God loves you very much. But because of wrongdoings and sin that is in our life, our sin has separated us from God. But God, because of His love, sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross so that all our wrongdoings can be forgiven and that we can come back to Him. And so all we need to do to accept Him is to ask the Lord to forgive us and to invite Him into our hearts to become our Lord and our Saviour. So if you want to invite Jesus and experience this God that can help you, I want you to pray this prayer after me. All right, you ready? Just say this prayer after me. Repeat after me, right? Say, Dear God, thank you for loving me. I know that you're a God that is able to empower me to cross over. So right now, I ask you to forgive me of my wrongdoings. Cleanse me. I invite you, Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Savior and my Lord. Oh God, empower me so that I can have the strength and the wisdom to be able to successfully cross over that I will know you more and you can use my life to be a blessing to other people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, if you just said that prayer, congratulations, because now you are what the Bible calls a child of God. You know, we want to help you in your journey in knowing God more. So you see the details that I hear, the email address. We want you to send us a, a message so that we can connect with you, so that we can help you grow in your faith and know God more. We'd love to do that, all right? So just email us your information. Amen. Let me pray the benediction, church, uh, as we close today's service. The Lord bless you in your coming in and going out. The Lord's favour come upon you, your family, your children and their children. May the Lord open the heavens and send you an abundance of provision and bless all the work of your hands. May the Lord make you the head, not the tail. You will always be at the top, never at the bottom. May you be blessed and others will be blessed through you. May the Lord be your refuge and your fortress and under His wings you will find protection and rest. And may His abiding presence be with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, church. God bless you. We'll see you next week.